Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to our being hardware and in today's video, yeah, we're gonna look at three of the best budget gaming monitors in early 2021. Now place three on this list will be dedicated to the best budget 1080p pick. Second spot, we're gonna find the best budget ultra wide. On the last final spot, yeah, we find the best budget 1440p pick. Uh, in early 2021 now if you find anything like yeah all items will be linked up down below with that said let's look at the best budget 1080p monitor in 2021 all right so first up on today's list we find the 24 g2 from aoc coming in at 180 dollars and the 24 g2 is a 24 inch flat a 1080p 144 hertz IPS panel with adaptive sync and yeah, low frame rate compensation. Now the reason why the screen makes it onto the stop list is pretty simple. We got high refresh rate here, great adaptive sync implementation that works flawlessly with AMD and Nvidia GPUs. We're getting a fast response time and an IPS technology and all of this guys for 200 bucks, which as far as I'm aware, no other monitor on the market has been able to beat. Yeah, this far at least. And the thing is, it takes pretty much all the boxes you want on a gaming monitor, such as low input lag, high contrast ratio, for an IPS panel at least, and even an ergonomic design that includes height adjustment stand. And yeah, this is something you typically have to pay premium for. We're getting a visa mount support, plenty of IO and USB support, and even factory color performance is solid, with the bonus of some wide gamut coverage. Now in case you're interested, I got a more in-depth review of the 24G2 from AOC in a video linked up down below. Now Amazon is selling these guys for $180 and that makes it the best budget 1080p screen that I've ever tested so far. Now in case you want to check it out, yeah, you'll find it linked up down below. Alright, so let's move on to place 2 and here we find the best budget ultra wide in early 2021. And I've been doing a lot of research and I ended up picking the AOC CU 24G2X. This is by far, in my opinion, the best budget ultra wide in early 2021. Now, if you haven't tried 21.9 ultra wide aspect ratio and 2440 by 4040p resolutions before, it actually offers some attractive benefits, not only for productivity, but yeah, also for entertainment purposes. Now, the design is not too aggressively gamer inspired, while the stand is sturdy. Now, moreover, it offers a wide range of ergonomics, and this includes height adjustment, swivel, tilt, and even visa mount compatibility. Now, the monitor uses a 144Hz Samsung SVA panel with custom backlight solution. And this includes, yeah, a 2440x1440p. This is 21.9 ultra wide resolution with 1500R curve that supports 8 bits per sub pixel color output without something called deteriorating. And on paper, we got a 1 millisecond response time, and it comes in under 500 US dollars, which, yeah, considering all of these specifications, is incredible value. Now, as we can expect from my VA panel, guys, the blacks are deep and the whites are bright, and the overall relationship between the darkest, you know, and the brightest tones are quite expressive, making for an immersive viewing experience, and this is particularly in darker rooms. Furthermore, yeah, the monitor boasts a color gamut volume of 119% sRGB and about 88% Adobe RGB coverage, and this results in more saturated and lifelike colors. And generally, the colors look great considering it's a VA panel. Now, naturally, though, IPS will provide you with punchier and more prestige colors, but you won't get nearly as high contrast or deep blacks. So, as you can hear guys, this is a trade-off you have to make. Viewing angles are generally not a problem here either. Now, as always, the pixel response time is the weakest point of a VA panel, including this one. And this is, yeah, something that you need to be aware of. Now, unfortunately, AOC's overdrive implementation isn't as good as some of their other monitors. By using its strongest overdrive mode, introduces pixel overshot. So, therefore, guys, I highly recommend that you leave this option at medium at least. 
The smearing is mainly noticeable in darker scenes at a higher frame rate. And if the smearing starts bothering you, you can lower the monitor's refresh rate down to 120Hz. Or you can use something called MBR. This stands for Motion Blur Reduction. This is a stop backlight function that causes the backlight to flick in the frequency matching the refresh rate of the display. And this helps reduce the motion blur. It is a nice trade-off to eliminate most of the smearing while still keeping, you know, a high refresh rate. I haven't actually tested this particular panel, but I have reviewed a very similar screen. And based on reviews, guys, the 144Hz Samsung SVA panel that is sitting inside the CU24G2X, based on yeah, the reviews I've read, the panel should handle smearing better than other VAs out there. But yeah, at the end of the day, all VAs. Yeah, they do suffer from some level of smearing, so this is something that you need to be aware of. But yeah, considering its monitor specifications, performance and price, its design quality and connectivity options, if you want to upgrade to an ultra-wide in 2021, this is by far the best budget ultra-wide pick of 2020, moving into 2021. Link to where you can pick this up can be found down below. Let's move on to number 1 on the list and here we find the best budget 4040p gaming monitor of 2020. And here we find the LG 27GL850. This is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 nano IPS display. This one's got a 1 millisecond response time and a 144Hz refresh rate with adaptive sync. And this also works both of Nvidia and AMD. Now, thanks to this IPS display, guys, it offers fantastic image with 98% DC IP3 color gamut. And from what I've read and heard, the colors as well as the black levels are one of the most appealing ones you find on the monitors at this price point. I haven't actually tested this screen in person, but I have looked up plenty of reviews before, yeah, including this on this list. So you can be sure, guys. Yes, I have done my homework here. This is a fantastic monitor, hands down. A nano IPS does a very good job of looking similar to an OLED. And the fact is, LG is using the same technology that they're using in their OLED TVs. As we can see, the panel has an anti glare coating with very tiny bezels all around. Now, the 850 comes with HDR10, but because uh, the screen can only go up to 350 peak brightness, the HDR is unfortunately very lackluster. And again, I haven't tested this monitor myself, but according to various reviews, the monitor suffers from minor degrees of noticeable pixel trailing when running the monitor in as fast as 1 millisecond in the response time setting. However, dialing back on this setting to perhaps 3 or 4 milliseconds will eliminate that. And from what I've read and heard, it shouldn't make the screen more blurry or less sharp. But I guess, as the setting is there, it is up to you guys to play around with until you find something that works for you. Now, the 850 is a very impressive monitor that offers TN-like response time performance with the color and the viewing angles that benefits from an IPS screen. And with a 144Hz fast refresh rate and adaptive sync, you can essentially lock the frame rate at 144fps in those competitive eSport titles and activate G-Sync in those heavy AAA titles with lots of details and then enjoy tear-free gameplay. Amazon has this listed for $4.99, this is insane value. But in case you want to save a bit more, you can even pick up the renewed variant here and that will shed off another $36 off the price tag. So what do you think about this list guys? What is your preferred panel type? Is it IPS? Is it TN? Or is it VA? Do you like curved monitors? I'm a sucker for it, I think it. I think it enhances the gaming experience overall. But yeah, anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. And yeah, in the meantime, I got a ton of monitors in the pipeline for you guys. You definitely, yeah, you want to subscribe to the channel to never miss an upcoming episode. In the meantime, yeah, watch either of these two videos. And I will see you guys in the next video.